acting. I'm not very good at it. Well, you know, I hear you are a wonderful pancake maker. <laughs> you want me to tell them the story? Absolutely, I want you to, to tell them the story. Uh, that was many years ago when um, one of my granddaughters was in fourth grade, and I have written a lot of children's books. And when I lived in Buffalo, New York, I uh, was privileged to have, uh, uh, you know, a, a story every Sunday in the paper. So, um, because I've written children's books, the teacher of my granddaughters asked me to come to school and talk about children's literature. So, I was very happy to do so. And my little granddaughter then was in kindergarten. Her name is Melissa. Now she's all grown up and she's almost 30. Oh my God. She said to me, Grandma, when you come to school, to Julie's class, will you come to my class? And I said, of course. So I came to Melissa's class and the teacher said, Melissa, won't you introduce your grandmother? And Melissa said, this is my grandmother. So the teacher said, it's very nice and all grandmothers are special, but maybe you can tell your friends what your grandmother does that not all grandmothers do. And she said, with a big smile, my grandmother makes the best pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> So that was one of my best introductions. Thank you. You're so splendid. But oh, well, thank you. I think somebody is there with a question. I, I do too. No, uh, University of Pittsburgh. We're glad to have you back. Go ahead, unmute, and ask your question. Um, we want to thank you so much for your writings and how you've impacted our Holocaust studies and for speaking to us this evening. Um, our question is: um, Did you ever ask your husband what made him decide to single you out and keep returning to you, and what made him commit? to rescuing you in the fullest sense of the word? In a way, I cannot even say singled out. It so happened, you know, my father made me wear, as I mentioned, the skiing boots. So I was one of the very few girls that was on my feet. And I was standing in the doorway when my husband came, came up to me. And, um, and later on, he looked for me in the hospital. And I, I did not recognize him. But uh, he found me and we started that relationship, of course. I've always marveled at the fact that, um, you know, to me he was like, literally like a Prince Charming coming on a charger to, to liberate me and everything. And um, I could not believe why he would single me out and the way I looked in everything. <laughs> and people have asked him the question, was it love at first sight? He would say, no, it was love at first fright. <laughs> so he was, he always, I mean, Bess and Nancy, of course, knew my husband. He was always very funny about it. And, uh, um, you know, he would always say it was natural. But I'm still in love with him. Well, thank you very much, University of Pittsburgh. And I'm so glad you got to ask your question. Um, how about, let's go to Fordham University Graduate School of Social Services, the Terrytown campus. Um, hello again. Okay, this will lead into a question. Um, I actually invited my aunt tonight. She couldn't come, but she said she grew up around the corner from you in Buffalo. And she said it was amazing because in the 1950s, no one wanted to talk about the Holocaust, and you were there talking about it. What is your aunt's name? Um, Ellen, well, Ellen Livingston, her parents were Mel and Sophie Livingston. She said her sister was friends with one of your daughters. Livingston, of course. Sophie, Sophie Livingston. She was a very dear friend of mine, yes. Yes. She was very special, and she said that I talked about it, right? I didn't quite get the entire question. I don't think she's gotten to it yet. Oh, she didn't get to the question? <laughs> well, I have a tendency to talk too much, you heard it. I do too. Um, so my aunt said no one wanted to talk about it, but you did. So even after going through the immediate trauma, you were 